The Miguel Center in Tucson, Arizona. Second round action in the West. Our first game. Third seeded Oklahoma against sixth seeded Purdue. And the bracket here in the West, Purdue, Oklahoma, the winner will advance to face the winner of Gonzaga and St. John's. Now look quickly at the Al Cunningham in the backcourt, McQuay Robinson, Cardinal in the front court for Oklahoma, Raymond Price, Johnson Stone, and Nahara. Gus Johnson, Dan Bonner with you. What do you think when you look at this game from the very beginning? Two tough teams, tenacious teams with a couple of tough guys. This ought to be like a heavyweight championship fight. And Purdue controls the tap. Man-to-man -man defense for Oklahoma. Now Cornell. Inside, Robinson turns, feeds. Purdue off to a good start. Gary McQuay, Greg McQuay rather, with the jam. Man-to-man -man defense for Purdue, and the quickness of the Oklahoma guards may present some problems for the Boilermakers out front. Inside, Johnson feeds Nahara. Back to Johnson. He missed the short layup. Now Cunningham along with Cardinal, rise and fire. Cardinal hit the big three that was the clincher in the win in the first round over Dayton. And a foul up top. Carson Cunningham tripping up. Hollis Price. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Talk about this game and what you expect to see early. I expect that we're going to see Cardinal and Nahara really going at one another, but one of the big issues is going to be the guard play. Oklahoma doesn't get enough credit for their guard play. Outstanding three-point shooters, and when Oklahoma wins, these guys, including Nolan Johnson, generally play very well. Nolan Johnson, a junior from Brooklyn, New York. Ties the game up at two apiece. Back door, Mike Robinson leans in. Oh, my! And tough shot. Mike Robinson. <laughs> tough doesn't begin to describe that, guys. Robinson, a senior, the pride of Peoria, Illinois. Robinson, of course, an outstanding offensive rebounder. Oklahoma's going to have to keep him off the board. Nahara comes up short. McQuay with the rebound. Now Cornell in transition. Cardinal. Nice fake, double clutch. Renzi Stone rips it down. That Nahara Cardinal matchup is going to be fun to watch all day long. Raymond had four threes. And in the first round, misses his first shot. Al Cunningham for three. And a whistle. We talked about Mike Robinson and his importance to the Purdue basketball team, his quickness there along the baseline. He's got a couple of inches on Nolan Johnson. He'll have to use that, particularly going to the offensive boards. Nice play for the Boilermakers. Cardinal call for his first foul. Now, those of you expecting to see Auburn, Iowa State, Wisconsin, Arizona will get you out to those games before they tip. Inside McQuay. And a foul. Purdue not noted as a team that runs the ball up and down the court, but Cunningham took advantage of an opening there in the transition game. Gene Cady has to be one of the year. And you talk about a team taking the personality of its coach. We've talked about this Purdue squad as a tough team, but tough teams are typical of Gene Cady throughout his 20 years at Purdue. First free throw good for McQuay. Kelvin Sampson, six years at Oklahoma, and he's led the Sooners into the tournament six straight seasons. They're looking for their second straight Sweet 16 appearance. Purdue and Oklahoma getting things started. We'll keep you updated on what happens in Tucson, but those of you awaiting the Midwest region action from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Auburn and Iowa State are getting set to tip it off. We'll send you to Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery in Minneapolis right after this. Our coverage of the men's 2000 NCAA championship continues now. 
from Minneapolis with the first and second round game. It has been a gloomy day in the upper Midwest, but that certainly will not dampen the enthusiasm of this enormous crowd that has gathered to watch the Auburn Tigers take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Both these teams, of course, advanced and play here on Thursday. Later tonight, we've got UCLA against Maryland, and the two winning teams will go on to Auburn Hills next Thursday. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. Welcome to Minneapolis. And this uh, Iowa State team has gotten a lot of their folks excited, Bill, and they've got an inside-outside combo that really works. Who wouldn't get excited about Marcus Pfizer? Dynamite deep on the floor, putting it on the floor, posting up, but alongside Mr. Excitement, Jamal Tinsley. Bernie can show it and take it away with the best of him. He's a magician with the basketball. He understands weight distribution, put you back. He's an ankle buster, ankle turner. He's got the kiss shots at the end. Look at this, show it, take it back. A lot of lingerie lingering when he's on the floor. The Auburn Tigers, of course, lost their star, Chris Porter, late February. They've struggled a little bit since then, but they've got Mamadou Njai, who has been a force in the middle. And when they want to run, it's so important that he plays good defense. If he can make presentations, negate attempts around the rim, they can get it going the other way. This should help them. Mac McAndy has stepped up magnificently. He can make deep shots. He understands how to post up. He can draw a little nylon from deep. And the third member of our commentary team, let's join him now. Here's Armin Kataya. Thanks, Vern. You know, these coaches believe this is much of a mental matchup. It is a physical one, and to help relieve some of the mental strain. Auburn head coach Cliff Ellis told us yesterday he took his team to the Mall of America for 90 minutes, let him walk around and break up some of that cabin fever staying at the hotel. As for Larry you stays the Iowa State head coach, he said after that win over Central Connecticut, you know what, he blew off a film session, a late night session, and said, hey guys, go out and do your thing. I'll see you at 12.30 for bed check. He believes a team that's mentally tougher today is gonna win it. Back to you, Vern. Now let's check the lineups for Iowa State and Auburn. First, the Auburn starting five. Mac McGadney, Mamadou Njai bothered by a bad knee, but he has been a force. Jay Hurd, Damian Fishback, and Doc Robinson, the senior point guard. And for Iowa State, the All-American Marcus Pfizer, Stevie Johnson, Cantrell Horton, Jamal Tinsley, and if you've not seen him, you will enjoy watching him. Michael Nurse rounds out the starting five. And our refereeing trio today, led by Mike Sanzier, Bob Donato, and Donnie Gray. Iowa State seated number two. They get the tip. It's in the hands of Jamal Tinsley. And Vern Lundquist. Auburn goes minimum. Quickly so. Here's the entry pass. Ah. Pfizer first shot. Oh. No tip. No good. Stevie Johnson comes out. And Nurse will get it back in the hands of Jamal Tinsley. Stevie Johnson plays so big. Much bigger than his size. Dribble, Cantrell Horton in the lane, off the glass and in. Well, they feel he played not as well as he's capable of the other day, stepping up a little kiss down the lane. Now, Larry Eustace telling us he expected Horton to have a much, much better game today. Now, Doc Robinson, Michael Nurse out on him. Jamal Tinsley picks up Damian Fishback. And the Fishback should be able to get a shot off over Tinsley, but here they get a five-second call, a little breakdown. How about that pressure? By the little guy. A pretty good defense by Mel, as they call Tinsley, but how about this with Horton? They love to value that three-second area, and Pfizer moves out, gives the little guys room to roam. Now Jamal Tinsley, he's picked up by Fishback. There's the pick from Johnson. Tinsley, a baseline move, and that will send him to the free throw line. I'll tell you a little bit more about Iowa State, located in Ames, Iowa. About a three-hour drive down Interstate 35 from here in the Big 12. Their first conference championship this season since 1945 when they won the Big Six. Wow, it's grown a little bit since then. Of course, the first time I heard about them was Gary Thompson, known as the Roland Rocket. And I was fortunate enough to see Gary out here, a great performer. Of course, Johnny Orr later, as we said the other day, coached it an outstanding job with Warner Second Guerrero, people like that. Yeah, but Stacy has them perking pretty good, Byrne. Jamal Tinsley gets two free throws. That enhances the lead and makes it 4 0. Gary Thompson, the first All American in Iowa State history, and Marcus Pfizer, a consensus All American pick. The announcement made last week. He's the real thing. Here's the pressure on the ball. This is where Larry Eustacey thought they could get better. 
Tinsley does a reach from behind, and Jay Hurd drives the lane, starting in his fifth consecutive game now, and he gets the first Auburn basket. They felt Jay Hurd. Well, not really, Bill. <laughs> is that that where they want to get a little zone look here, Vern? <laughs> Jay Hurd has put on some pounds this year. Now Pfizer measures his man, and his man in this instance is McGadney. Pfizer misses his second shot. He had 27 points in game one. He's had five games of 30 plus in the last nine games Iowa State has played. And Doc Robinson, a catalyst here, does a nice job getting Auburn into their sets. Also can break it down with the dribble. Here's Jay Hurd with a jumper. And he's got four points. That's inside the line for two. A little shove as he turned the corner, but getting back to his weight. Uh, they were telling us, they, the Auburn people, that this summer he ate and didn't work out. And he's still eating, but he's working out, so they hope he, he comes back and Fishback goes out for him to come up gimpy. Fishback limping as he heads toward the bench. Damian Fishback, he has been bothered by a cyst on his right knee. I don't know whether this is a knee injury or not. The cyst has been there for a little bit of time. And during the 2 3 zone, you can locate Pfizer better. He's very good at passing out of these double team or help situations. But it's been moved by Tinsley. Back in his hands, he takes the jumper. Pfizer for the rebound, but it comes down. Marquis Daniels, who is a quick entrance into the game, and Johnson picks up the foul. You can rebound better. You can be in position to run the other way. Cliff Ellis, who has been around a few years. Got to know him at Clemson, where he developed some terrific big guys. Eldon Campbell, Dale Davis comes to mind. A guy named Grant. Yeah, Morris. He Morris. and Harvey for what one year, right? That's right. With Oklahoma. Back it comes to Jay Hurd. Now Tinsley guarding him again. Doc Robinson with a jumper off the mark. Pfizer gets his first board of the game. Kicks it. To Tinsley, three on three. Jamal Tinsley, little underhanded dish, finds Stevie Johnson off the glass for two more. He's got a flair in everything he does, and of course, almost a home game for Iowa State. Now, this is a huge red and gold clad crowd here. We had 22,000 for game one Thursday, and I think we will exceed that easily tonight. Here's Marquis Daniel. Wow. Not an easy shot either, and not the presentation Pfizer held in advance. Freshman from Orlando gets two, and now Auburn goes into his own. It's a little 1-3-1, one, one, although they're matching up just a little. Skip pass, Nurse into the corner. Cantrell Horton looks for Pfizer, and Fishback is putting a body on it. He sure is, and they got N.J. I mean, Lumen in the back. McGadney. McGadney, correct. That's out of bounds off Iowa State. And Vern, some of the difficulty is uh, the zone you can't dribble as easily against, but right down, as you mentioned, McCandy all over him, and in the back, you got the big fella there who can negate. So in a sense, it's a double team out of the zone. The fella said he's going to rotate bodies on Pfizer through much of the day and pray he doesn't get fouled for it. I spoke to one of the assistants, Eugene Harris. He said they are focused. He said he hasn't seen this in a while for Auburn. Well, it's the time of year. Jay Hurd, just a bit short. Nice position for Stevie Johnson. Now here comes Jamal Tinsley, alley -oop. Pfizer, a little deep, gets his own miss, and will go to the free throw line. He put such pressure on you, Vern, his ability to get the puppies up and down. He streaks by little guys, and he's got wonderful, soft hands. And then the composure, first to take the hit, shot negate it, to gather, and this is a ton of strength going up there, about 260, would you say? Yes, and he's lost 35 pounds in the offseason. Well, when uh, Larry Eustacey came in, he wasn't happy about the demands on the conditioning, but he's very happy now the way things have progressed with his career. Marcus Pfizer was telling us last night that uh, after Tim Floyd went to the NBA and uh, Larry Eustacey came in, he was fighting it, and he fought it most of last year. And during the offseason, he thought to himself, I'm not going to gain anything by fighting this program, and he bought into it. A little lane violation here. Pfizer gets a couple from the free throw line. 8 6. Iowa State. Let's take a look at our databank in Oklahoma. 
They've been knocked out of the tournament by Big Ten teams the last two years, Indiana and Michigan State, but Indiana losing to Pepperdine yesterday. And Michigan State advancing this afternoon with a win over Utah. So the Big Ten, with the exception of the Indiana Hoosiers, having a pretty good tournament. Don't forget, for those of you, once again, looking for the Wisconsin-Arizona game, we'll get you out there shortly. 10-9 the score. OU leading Purdue. Kind of the type of game we expected. Each team really playing the other one tough on the defensive end. And Cornell, his offense is going to be extremely important for Purdue this afternoon. First basket of the game for Jerron Cornell, the young man from South Bend, Indiana. Thought about going to Notre Dame, but changed his mind, came to Purdue. Inside, Avila stripped away by Mike Robinson. Good defense inside by Cardinal to disrupt that whole thing. Cornell again. Nice ball fake off the dribble. And the rebound, Avila. Cornell not really noted as a dribble kind of guy. More of a catch and shoot player. Creates problems for himself sometimes when he does try to dribble and wasn't able to finish right there. Cardinal really going at it with Avila inside. Purdue trying to play in front of the guys down low, and Oklahoma needs to reverse the ball from one side to the other to free those guys inside. Seven to shoot. Nahara from deep. And the loose ball picked up by Oklahoma. And they get a new 35. And Eduardo Nahara telling everybody what he wants them to do. And I'll tell you what, if Eduardo told me, I'd pay attention. Price tipped out, snatched down by Cornell. Probably Eduardo told him to make it, don't you think, Gus? Probably. Now Cardinal, who's been quiet, to Rodney Smith in the corner. Smith, drop step, extra tip. Baby jumper is short. A lot of one-on-one -on -one for Purdue on the offensive end. Johnson Cardinal diving on the floor and out of bounds. And Purdue will get it back. They say Oklahoma stepped on the baseline. No, no, the referee just pointed the wrong way, Gus. It's white ball. So Brian Cardinal, known for his floor burns, known for taking charges, giving 100% on the floor all the time. That's why he wears those knee pads. Kelvin Sampson had a good line yesterday. He said, you know, when a guy wears knee pads, it tells you something about what he has in mind. No question. Raymond in the corner, Raymond. High pick and roll, hesitation knocked away. Nahara with 12 to shoot. Inside, stone and one. Let's see who they got with the foul. Oklahoma doing a great job that time, moving the ball from side to side. Inside play and Stone with the basket. So Oklahoma grabs the lead on Purdue. Nine and a half minutes to play in the first half. We'll keep you on top of what's happening in Tucson. But those of you awaiting the tip in the West region, action in Salt Lake City between the Badgers of Wisconsin and the top-seeded Arizona Wildcats, we'll get you to the tip-off of that game with Craig Bowlerjack and Barry Booker right after this. Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Ellie's renting again. And Enterprise picked her up again. She said Enterprise picks her up free. Free? Free. Now that makes renting easy. Mm -hmm. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Who's the fastest growing major provider of e-business servers? The company that runs one of the best e-businesses around. Coincidence? We don't think so. Dell knows how he works. Visit Dell.com. Please welcome today's guest, Drew Carey! Well, today I'm going to show everyone how to install Direct TV. Great! First, you take your drill, your wrench, your stud finder. This will come in handy. Just in case. Fantastic! And chuck it out the window. Because now, not only to get more movies and sports and stuff and digital quality picture and sound, but installation's free too. Direct TV, now with local channels. My work is done here. I bequeath my Pizza Hut empire to Teddy. Whoa! 
We're gonna create the ultimate pizza. Let's see some cheese. I want six kinds of cheese. Give me the toppings department. More toppings. More, More toppings. Everybody say ultimate. The new ultimate cheese pizza, loaded with the topping of your choice. Six kinds of cheese, 50% more of it, and an incredible price. $8.99 medium, large, just two bucks more. But, sir, that price. You like your job, money man? It's a good price, sir. Excellent price. The ultimate cheese pizza from Pizza Hut. Another one of the best pizzas under one roof. Round two of the West Region rolls on here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Second and final game of the day here at the Huntsman Center. The winner moves on to the Sweet 16. Wisconsin, oh, they want to go, but they'll have to get by the number one seed of the West, Arizona. Earlier today, LSU moved on to the round of 16 with a five-point win over Texas. Strollmile Swift, the co-SEC Player of the Year, led the way with 23. And hi, everybody. Craig Buller, Jack, along with Barry Booker. Arizona had the easy first-round win over Jackson State, Barry, and they won without the big seven-footer, Lauren Woods. Well, they had to play down the stretch without their second-leading scorer, Lauren Woods. Great shot blocker, nearly four a game. But this freshman backcourt for Arizona really stepped up. Jason Gardner, the outstanding point guard, averaged 16 a game the last seven of the season and really helped set up his his teammates very well and Gilbert Arenas outstanding score averaging 20 a game over the last nine ball games. Let's talk about Wisconsin. They got here because of defense one of six teams in the Big Ten to get to the tournament. They beat Tark with defense and three pointers held Fresno State to just 40 percent in the second half and Mike Kelly six steals in that ball game did a great job getting Wisconsin jump started offensively and then they got it going from three point range. John Bryant was phenomenal against Fresno State. Lit him up from the left wing, hit four three-point baskets in a row to put Fresno State away. Well, for Wisconsin, the head coach is Dick Bennett in his fifth season, handed Tarkane in his first first-round loss in the NCAA tournament on Thursday night. His starting lineup today, Dwayne Dwayne, one of the three-point shooters for the Badgers, Kowski, Vershaw, Bryant, and Kelly. And for Arizona today, Luke Walton, the freshman, if the name sounds familiar because he is the son of the great Bill Walton, along with Wright Wessel and the freshman backcourt of Arenas and Gardner. The head coach of Arizona, Lute Olsen, 17th season, his 16th straight NCAA tournament appearance. Wisconsin and Arizona, they've played once or twice before. Series tied at 1-1. We got to go way back. <laughs> way back. 1966. See, were you born A couple then? of months before my birth. <laughs> That was even before the first Super Bowl. It's been a while. Uh, Wisconsin 19 and 13. They finish up 8 and 8 in the Big Ten. Arizona comes in 27 and 6. And they were co-champs of the Pac-10 at 15 and 3. Tip control by Wisconsin. The slowdown style of Wisconsin. They're going to force Arizona to play defense for long stretches at a time. And that can wear a very thin Arizona team down. Uh, you mentioned thin. Lute Olson <laughs> maybe will rotate total of seven players and a quick turnover Dwayne Dwayne with the uh, with the walk and let me just say Dwayne Dwayne in Sudan and he has Sudanese ties his family tradition firstborn by the way the firstborn son receives the family name as his first thus Dwayne 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 Dwayne's parents both professors at the University of Indiana in Bloomington so much talk about whether Arizona deserved that number one seed. They took two teams out of the Pac-10, Barry. Stanford the other in the south is the one seed. As Arenas hits the first bucket of this game, Arizona gets the one seed. Many thought Cincinnati, but the injury to Kenyon Martin and the Bearcats dropped to a number two. Wisconsin, on the other hand, some controversy, taking six teams out of the Big Ten, a team that finished eight and eight in Big Ten play. 13 losses on the season for Wisconsin. First shot on the dribble, double pump, gets the shot away, and a whistle. Man-to-man -man defense from the Arizona Wildcats opening up, trying to put a lot of pressure on Wisconsin, force them to handle the basketball under pressure, and maybe force a few turnovers to pick up the tempo of this ball game. Well, first foul to Jason Gardner. Bershaw at the line. 
So Wisconsin gets on the board. Bershaw, 6'9", junior out of East Peoria, Illinois. Makes the second. Tied at two. Wisconsin very aggressive on the defensive end. Mike Kelly, we mentioned in the open, does a great job defensively, man-to-man. -man. Shut down Courtney Alexander, held him to only 11 points. And there he is again, coming up with a steal. Well, he's the, he's the thief. Had six steals on Thursday night. The leading scorer in the nation, Courtney Alexander of Fresno State, really frustrated by the defensive pressure that Mike Kelly provided. Wessel moving in. Or trying to guard Bershaw, and now they feed to Kowski. Oh, reverse, and it rolls in. Boy, Kelly just snuck down baseline and got the roll. Bershaw trying to make the feed over to Kowski. Kelly ended up with the basketball and got the easy lay-in. And Wisconsin has it in a half-court game the way they love to play in Arizona. We'll see if these freshman cards can handle this slow tempo. It's a very difficult style to play against that Wisconsin plays. Wessel gives it up to Walton. Russell from the corner. Motion offense, Arizona. Walton in traffic. Tried to dump it across for a tough pass and through the hands of Michael Wright. Wisconsin does a great job forcing turnovers, and they take care of the ball extraordinarily well. That is how they handled Fresno State. Forced a bunch of turnovers from the Bulldogs and only turned it over themselves nine times. Off the rim, Arenas, the rebound. Tremendous freshman backcourt for Lute Olsen. Way beyond their years. Inside, Wessel had the ball stripped away. <laughs> Mike Kelly once again knocking it away. Wisconsin double teaming in the post, trying to keep the ball out of Michael Wright's hands. Wright, the leading scorer for Arizona. And Barry, in that first round game, 17 Fresno State turnovers led to 17 Wisconsin points. See if the Badgers can connect this time off the rim. and. The rebound goes out to right. Wisconsin took 29 three-point attempts the other day. Quick pull-up three by Gardner, off the mark. Arizona will get it with a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Jason, Jason Gardner had a tough time on Thursday against Jackson State. Three points, four assists, and five turnovers. Gardner, three-pointer, no. Wessel battling underneath the rebound, pops three. <laughs> And Wisconsin gathers it in. There's a there's the sharpshooter, John Bryant, who had 21 points against Tarkanian, and his Bulldogs hit seven of 11 from behind the three-point line. Bershaw puts it on the floor, draws the double team. Dwayne, three-pointer, way off the mark. What's going on in Salt Lake City where the Wisconsin Badgers are taking on the top seed Arizona Wildcats. This game just underway. Clark in their last outing, Wisconsin had an offensive explosion and you know that Dick Bennett can't count on that every time out. He certainly hasn't been able to count on that all season long. That's been their biggest problem. You know they aren't going to turn the ball over typically. You know they're going to defend and rebound well. What you don't know is how well are they going to shoot it. They erupted the other night. That's why they're still alive. You would think Arizona would try to pick up the pace and make sure that they get high quality shot to make it a transition game as best they can. How different will the styles be in this game? Very much, very different. Wisconsin doesn't necessarily want to milk and maximize the clock. It just takes them a while to get good shot. Arizona, on the other hand, will be a lot quicker to push it ahead and try to score in the open court. Don't you love those guys who never seen a shot that they didn't like? <laughs> in Minneapolis, Auburn's Tigers and the Iowa State Cyclones, 15-14, Auburn in the lead here. and. Uh, well, the idea for Auburn is to stop Marcus Pfizer. And so far, so good. He's 0-4 from the field. He's made two points, both from the foul line. And Auburn doing a nice job shooting the ball, Greg. They've made seven of their 12 field goal attempts. Neither team yet to knock down the triple. Auburn's Damian Fishback limped off the court early in this game with a slight sprain to the ankle, but he is expected to return. And what they're doing with Marcus Fies is they're trying to front him in the post. If they don't front him, then they're trying to front him because Mama Duenjai is an excellent shot block, and he can kind of roam the lane and cover the paint area if they confront Pfizer down in the low post. We'll keep an eye on this game as well. Meanwhile, let's get you back to the West Region action in Tucson. The key. More and more trips with a closeout. Deny. Force the issue. 
Jamal Tinsley, Marcus Pfizer, Michael Nurse, Rancic, and Hawkins on the floor for the second seeded Iowa State team. Oh, nice job. It sure was. Yep. They tried to lob the screen for Pfizer. Tinsley off the mark. Marquis Daniels defending. Fish back way outside. Rancic goes up, grabs it. And he puts it in the hands of Brandon Hawkins. Rancic. Yes! And, and a real good non call as well. Well, Rancic able to bring it out, which complements your guards. Push the ball, get yourself set. Fish back, way off the mark. A 7 2 run. Here's Hawkins. Back to Tinsley. There's the spin move, but it's off his foot and out of bounds. A little too well. You're going to do that when you're frequently penetrating. But what helps this club? Rancic now out, run out. Now he gets into a lane, Vern. Gets himself established. And I love the non call here. Under the rim, let it go. A little kiss by the big fella. Coming back to this area where he'd gone to high school. Martin Rancic, a native of Bratislava, Slovakia. And in his junior season, 6'8", 230-pounder, and they uh, welcome him back. Paul Shirley, the other big man, still bothered by a broken bone in his foot. And uh, Larry Eustace tells us he doesn't think he'll play at all tonight. Robinson, little runner for two. And also a page out of our book, a little weave from the old days. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh, then Jai just hasn't had any time. They go strong. Go strong. Pfizer up and under. Travel. Wow, he is somewhat frustrated. Njai gave up the early post, but the close down, the double, forced Pfizer. And right now, for the first time, it's not coming easy. The last couple of weeks, the flow has been his way. You Stacy, big defense. Guys that have influenced him. Bob Boyd, great coaches. Southern Cal and Tim Floyd, of course, who was at Iowa State prior to him. Richard Evans on the floor now, number double zero for Iowa State. Rancic gets a rest. Nice pass in the lane, and Jai off the mark. Pfizer with a rebound. And nice pry, though. That's what he's got to do, shape up. Hawkins, Evans hurries into the post. Now Pfizer gets there. And Fishback has it. Over Fishback, still hasn't scored, but the follow from Richard Evans oh, is good. Nice little play, but of course, don't forget, Fern, Enjai is over double teaming. The weak side area is going to be open for rebounds. First bench points for Iowa State. They're up by three. Oh, another turnover. Here's Brandon Hawkins all by himself. Oh! Cliff Ellis wants the timeout. A little send it in, all because of great defense. Now six points. 2018 Purdue. Biggest lead of the game has been four points, make it six points for the Boilers. Oklahoma really trying to turn up the tempo in the man-to-man -man defense. Great pressure thus far. Cornell. Smith. How about that? Smith is a guy who's capable of going out there and hitting the three-point shot. Almost 50% from out there, 47% on the year. That's the first three-point basket in this game. Great denial defense by Smith. He plays hard when he goes in the ball game. Jamil Haywood in the game. In the corner. Nahara finally got one to fall from the perimeter. And a foul inside against Purdue. And an opportunity for a four-point trip for the Oklahoma Sooners. And they needed that. Jerron Cornell trying to block out inside. And Gene Cady very upset with the call. But Jerron Cornell is right at the free throw line as he drops down inside. The ball goes up. He takes that hand around and knocks him to the ground. And Newton is going to get a chance to go to the line. And Newton, 77% free throw shooter. The junior from Kansas City, Kansas, tore his ACL last year, was expected to be a starter, but has had to work his way into the lineup slowly. 
One of the problems that he's had is a gentleman who's standing behind him right now, Hollis Price, who's so quick and so good with the basketball. And Newton has done a great job for Oklahoma, providing some offensive spark coming off the bench. He's the highest percentage three-point shooter on this team. Both free throws good. 3-11 to go, first half of play. 23-22. West, Purdue leading Oklahoma 23-22. And it has been an intense defensive battle. Kelvin Sampson's troops not able to impose their backcourt quickness on the Purdue Boilermakers. Nahara has not been a big factor in the game. One of the keys, Brian Cardinal on the bench with two personal fouls, and he has been there a while in this first half. Cunningham, Smith, Lewis, McQuay, and Mike Robinson who catches the top of the key. Robinson wheeling inside the leaner, short. And the rebound, Nolan Johnson. John Fifth. Johnson did a nice job preventing Robinson from getting as close to the basket as Robinson was trying to go. Price on the right wing. Johnson. Spins. Great play. Purdue doing such a good job denying the ball on one side of the court. When Oklahoma has been able to reverse it to the other side, they can get the pass inside or attack off the dribble, which is what Johnson did on that occasion. And Oklahoma on a 6-0 run, they take a one-point lead. Johnson doing a great job keeping the ball away from Mike Robinson. And with Cardinal on the bench, Purdue really struggling to find somebody to give him some offense. McQuay. Smith. Aaron. Here come the Sooners on the break. Nahara trailing. Price leans in. This young fella, folks, Hollis Price, out of St. Augustine in New Orleans, he can play the game. One fifty-four to go in the first half of play, and Gene Cady. Given his Boilermakers an earful. Now, don't forget, coming up on Benzel at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will give you an earful. They will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Brian Cardinal is on the bench with two fouls. Jerron Cornell is on the bench for Gene Cady. The best scorer, Mike Robinson, has been really defended very well. 12-3 run for OU and a steal. Nahara ahead of the pack. Jam with the right hand. Gene Caney's just hoping his team can get to halftime alive. And another steal, but a foul. Haywood. Purdue trying to get the ball inside, but Nahara steals the pass. Not a good pass by Mike Robinson and Nahara. What speed he's got coming down the court. He beats Mike Robinson, who's no slouch, running up and down. So McQuay at the free throw line. Young man from Gary, Indiana. has had a great first half. Seven points. First free throw good. Comes in only a 49% free throw shooter, and that was a point that Purdue really desperately needed. Two of four, though, in the first half of play for McQuay, whose brother, Gary, is a former player for the Purdue Boilermakers. The free throw short, and the smallest man on the floor comes up with the rebound, Hollis Price. Price has really had a fine first half. Eight points, a couple of those in transition. Nahara leans in. Ten points for the third team All-America. Six of them coming during this recent Oklahoma run as Nahara's done a great job getting position inside with some ball reversal. Oklahoma's been able to find him. Now McQuay back and down. Last touch by the Boilers. Purdue coming unhinged here as they turn it over for the eighth time. That quickness in the backcourt. 
of Oklahoma and Brian Cardinal being on the bench in foul trouble. You don't want him to get his third. Wise decision by Gene Cady. But his teammates have to do the job staying in the game so the race isn't lost by the time he's able to get back into it. And an offensive foul. I believe it's Haywood setting a screen. His second. So with 38.5 to go in the first half of play, Purdue has led the game by as many as six, but a furious run by Oklahoma. 12-1. And they lead 30-24. Carson Cunningham with an opportunity to get the Boilermakers a little closer. First free throw good, and he learned how to shoot free throws growing up in southern Indiana. It's called the Virgil Sweep free throw shooting method. Former coach at Valpo. That's the way they teach the kids in southern Indiana to shoot free throws. And he's pretty effective with it, 80%. Iowa State leading Auburn. Wisconsin leading number one Arizona. Wisconsin plays that tempo game that's very difficult to deal with. Steal by Cunningham. Here come the Boilermakers. Nice bounce pass. Maynard, pump fake, count it. And with 20 seconds to go, Oklahoma leads by only two. And it's the defense that has brought Purdue back. Cunningham just stripping the ball from the freshman guard. Nahara. Shows you how good he is. He can talk to the referee while he's playing. Nahara. Four to shoot. Nahara for three. Off the back rim, no good. And that's the end of the first half of play. Very entertaining, Dan Bonner. A two-point halftime game. For the most part, the first half, an intense defensive battle. Kelvin Sampson arguing, thinks that Nahara was fouled as he tried to move and maneuver with the basketball. Now let's join Beth Moens with Coach Sampson. That's the end of the first half with the score. Oklahoma on top of Purdue, 30 to 28. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message. Pouring a little more than they normally do to this point. Turnover. Gardner pushing it up the court with the left hand. Turns, pops, and hits. Tough, tough shot by Jason Gardner. Arizona needs to get him going, especially with Arenas out of the game. Arenas and their leading scorer, Michael Wright, also on the bench right now for Arizona. Barry, you made the point earlier, you've got to spread it around. You can't expect Arenas or even Gardner just the two to carry this team. Walton's got to get involved. Jefferson and Wright. Bryant, three-pointer off the mark. Anderson chases it down in the corner. Here comes uh, Gardner. His tempo always in high gear. Love to push it. These strong freshman guards for Arizona. Wessel, contact, baseline. Wills made contact. And Charlie Wills off the bench with two quick ones. Arizona starting to drive it to the basket and finding themselves at the foul line once again. His second personal. Kowski back in. Linton's going to come out. Wisconsin using that bench. The high altitude and this deep bench of Wisconsin trying to work on Arizona in their seven player rotation. Good look at Justin Wessel. He wears those goggles because of cornea transplant surgery. Missed the front end. Kukowski up for the rebound. And Arizona only three of six from the line so far. Boone in traffic. Ball tipped by Gardner. Three-point try away. In and back out by Boone. Whistle underneath. Boy, the boards are crashing. Good job by Trevon Davis. Set up the open jumper and then crash the boards. Wessel picks up the foul. Higher seeds have won 32 of the 35 games. Gonzaga, Pepperdine, Seton Hall, the lower seeds that have advanced on. An 11 seed, the lowest seed that has advanced. That's the first, that's the uh, best performance by those higher seeds in 11 years. How about that defense by Anderson able to get a hand up? Foul was Driving down the baseline, 
Arizona coming over for the shot block. And the reach in by Boone, but we talk about the the tournament as a whole such parity in college basketball this season. I think we're going to see some great games this weekend as Billy Packer and Billy Packer was making the point last night with Jim Nance that anyone that's left in this tournament can get on a roll, get to the Final Four, and win this thing. Boy, Wesley really struggling from the free throw line. Jefferson came by for the rebound. Down low baseline. Wessel moving up, shoots it, up and in. Good touch. Justin Wessel with his first bucket. Arizona dominating Wisconsin on the board so far. <laughs> Davis driving it to the hole. Trevon Davis has come in off the bench and made a couple of very nice plays for this Wisconsin Badger Club, getting it to the hole right there and getting himself to the foul line right around Jason Gardner to get the deuce. Big trouble for uh, Richard Jefferson. Three fouls now. We're at halftime in Tucson, but they're playing in Minneapolis and Salt Lake City, and we'll take you there live momentarily. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. We're at halftime of the game in Tucson where the Boilermakers trail the Oklahoma Sooners by 230 to 28. Kelvin Sampson's probably saying, you know, we're in great shape. We're leading and we haven't hit a three pointer all day. And that's a big part of what they do offensively is knock down the three point shot. Because of Purdue turnovers, though, they've been able to get out in transition and take advantage of some open space. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Minneapolis, Auburn and Iowa State are doing battle in the Midwest. It's a 32 32 tie as they wind down the first half. Let's take you to the Metrodome in Minneapolis and join the action live. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raptor. The All American Marcus Pfizer has just picked up his second foul in the first half, sending Mamadou Mjai to the line. In a tie game, 32 all, 47.9 to go, first half. And Vern, it's been just terrific. Defense by Auburn. A little matchup look. They'll trail cutters. And they'll contain on the defensive end the penetration of Iowa State and then identify Pfizer. Once they identify him, they get a front and back on him. And it's been very hard for him. And I think emotionally, he is to just relax. They'll take a deep breath. It's gone smoothly. Once in a while, it isn't the way you want it. So don't fight it. Martin Rancic takes his place for the final 45 seconds. Pfizer, one of seven from the field. And uh, showing that frustration in uh, some glances he's exchanging with the officiating crew. Yeah, they're not love looks, are they? <laughs> no, not at all. Up and under, Stevie Johnson short. Here comes Auburn with a chance to add to their one-point lead. And they will play for the final shot in the first half. Larry Eustace yelling at his troops, don't foul. Got to go now. Running your play. And we're going to do a dribble drive. Robinson. Nope. Heard. Out of bounds. Off Tinsley. 3.3 to go. And Vern, how often do you end up with shots like that when you're holding for one? Instead of getting into the rhythm of the game, you don't have to score or shoot it, but run your stuff, and then you might end late with a good shot. Jamison Brewer is going to come on the floor now to uh, make the inbounds pass. He replaces Marquis Daniel. And it's taken away, stolen by Nurse. And we have reached the end of the first half. You know, Larry Eustachie is going to feel the same way Kelvin Sampson is feeling. Marcus Pfizer not having one of his premier nights, yet his Iowa State Cyclones are right there. They trail by one, 33-32. In Salt Lake City in the West Region, the Wisconsin Badgers with a 24-17 lead on the top seed in the West, the Arizona Wildcats. Let's go there live and join Craig Bowlerjack and Barry Booker. Wright grabs the miss from Arenas here in Salt Lake City. The number one seed, Arizona Wildcats trailing the eight seed, Wisconsin Badgers. Wessel, reverse, couldn't get it to go. Davis climbs up. Wisconsin. Boy, Trevon Davis, 5'10", he got up. Wisconsin doing a great job with defense. They forced six turnovers in their shooting. An outstanding percentage, 50% from the field so far to have this lead. 
Well, Wisconsin defensively, that's their stamp. Wisconsin. They play D relentlessly, and that's been the uh, story so far here in Salt Lake City. Two ties, one lead change. Vershaw was seven. Arenas really saving Arizona right now with 10 points. They have not been able to hit the three. Dwayne, Dwayne, he'll try the three ball, too strong. Bodies bang, no whistle, and the rebound goes out to Anderson of Arizona. Wisconsin, not a three-point shooting ball club, but they have three three-point field goals so far this afternoon. Right in traffic, they're gonna jump it. And possession arrow goes. So Dick Bennett and the Badgers with a 24 to 17 lead, 6:40 to play in the first half. Action still to come this evening here on CBS Out West. Number two St. John's against Gonzaga. Number six UCLA versus number three Maryland in the Midwest. We'll take a timeout. Thank you for joining us here on Pennzoil at the half. We'll send you back to Tucson for the second half right after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Going on, but one still in action in Salt Lake City, and we'll take you there in just a moment. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome to Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg here in our studios in New York at halftime. Auburn leading Iowa State 33 32. We we're just saying a little while ago, Larry Eustace probably trying to wonder just when Marcus Pfizer is going to kick in, but meanwhile, he and his Cyclones still in the game. They certainly are only down by one, but Auburn's defense and their shooting has been outstanding. Over 50% shooting, and the defense has really made it tough for Pfizer to get quality looks in that first half. All right, Clark, we will get the folks out to a game in progress now. That one in Salt Lake City in the West region. Eighth seed, Wisconsin, with a 26-17 lead on the top seed in the West, Arizona. Let's go to Craig Bullerjack and Barry Booker. 4.47 left here in the first half in Salt Lake City, round two of the West region. Wisconsin, the eighth seed, leading the number one seed in the West, Arizona. First shot with nine. Arenas keeping Arizona at least in this ball game, Barry, with ten points. But he has been it so far for this Arizona Wildcat ball club. Arizona shooting only 41% from the field, while Wisconsin shooting 45%. Wessel had a good look short chases down the miss but then first shot puts up a big hand and takes it away another turnover for Arizona number eight so far Arizona the one seed coming out of the pack 10 they were co-champs with Stanford and Barry Stanford got the one seed in the south some people believe Cincinnati with the injury to Kenyon Kenyon Martin still should be the one seed they got the two seed Arizona benefited with the one Lauren Woods, as you look at him, the big seven foot one inch big man, he's been on the bench for seven straight games, but yet I guess the committee felt like Arizona still continuing to win without him. But Temple, Iowa State, several strong candidates for that other number one seed. And Wisconsin trying to take them out. Second round of the NCAA tournament, and the top seed in the West is down. Wisconsin got here despite being eight and eight in Big Ten play. Six teams out of the Big Ten made the tournament. 13 losses overall for the Badgers. Three-pointer wouldn't go. Just beat the shot clock, but the rebound goes out to Michael Wright. Under four minutes left in the half. Gardner. And lately, Wisconsin has been working that shot clock, forcing this Arizona ball club that is thin, only seven scholarship players. Wisconsin's making them play a lot of defense. Inside the arenas in the Wessel. And that breaks a bit of a crowd. Justin Wessel, his second bucket, four points. He had 10 points, eight boards in 27 minutes against Jackson State on Thursday. Pretty set up by Gilbert Arenas on that last trip to get Arizona an easy best. Dwayne breaks out, likes that three-point shot, gives off to Will. Double team, stolen. Here comes Gardner. Dwayne on the chase, up and in. All of a sudden, Arizona catching a little fire. And these great freshman guards for Arizona, Gardner and Arenas, starting to take over this ball game, getting it into an up-tempo ball game the way Arizona needs it to be. Well, they've lived and died by the freshman backcourt. I mean, Gardner and Arenas, between the two, about 28 points a game. So far, they've combined for 14. Russell coming up on the rebound. Here comes Arenas. Arenas, good luck, pulls back in. Here come the Wildcats. 
a dozen for Arenas. And just when you think the number one seed may roll over, they fight back. They pull to within three. Two and a half to go. First half in Salt Lake. So the Wildcats have come roaring back in these final minutes of the first half, and they trail Wisconsin now 26 to 23. Meanwhile, in Tucson, Purdue and Oklahoma underway in the second half, and the Boilermakers have mounted something of a charge. Let's get you out to Tucson, Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 32-31, Oklahoma on top of Purdue. Oh, you led this game at halftime by two. Ryan Cardinal off the mark today from the perimeter. Now, here comes a speedy point guard with the kickback. Price in the corner now with him. Eight points for Hollis Price in the first half of play on 4 of 7 shooting. And a foul on the baseline. And the bracket here in the West, second round action. Three versus a six, Oklahoma and Purdue, the winner, takes on the winner of the Gonzaga-St. John's game, which is a two versus a 10. Neither team shooting the ball particularly well today, most notably from behind the three-point arc, but they've been able to get the ball inside. Eduardo Nahara really picked it up in the later stages of the first half and has a basket here already in the second. Price off the dribble. Misses. Now Cornell in the front court. Cornell only one for four in the first half. Mike Robinson across the lane. Nice look, Cornell. Frees himself on the baseline and can't get the roll. Price to Newton for three. Great look from the freshman. Hollis Price, great Newton now with five. Great job executing in the transition, not trying to force it inside, stops at the free throw line with the jump stop and makes the pass to the open shooter. Oklahoma, 35-31. Now Cornell drives baseline, kicks it out. Cardinal, extra pass, McQuay is fouled. So the Sooners use their first three-pointer of the day to stretch their lead over Purdue, 35-31. Still to come here on CBS this evening. Out West, Gonzaga and St. John's, they'll tip close to 8 p.m. And in the Midwest, UCLA and Maryland should tip right about straight up 8 o'clock. We thank you for joining us here on Penn's Oil at the half. We'll send you back to Minneapolis for the second half of your game right after this. Penn's Oil at the half has been sponsored by Penn's Oil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome back to Salt Lake City, West Region, second round, 108 remaining in the half. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumble, Clark Kellogg will get you caught up in all the scores and highlights, plus live look ins for games in progress. Stick around, that's coming up in just a few minutes here on Pennzoil at the half. Well, Wisconsin twice today have led by nine, but yet. As we close in on the first half, Arizona battling back to within three, and they have possession. Dick Bennett and the Wisconsin Badgers have to be thrilled. Arizona has had to battle like crazy just to stay close. Wisconsin has used their bench. They're trying to wear down these Arizona Wildcats and get them in the last few minutes of this ball game. Under a minute. Gardner on the drive, backs out, pulls up for three. Short. That ball not right in the arms of Bryant. Thank you very much. And he hands it off to Trevon Davis. Davis getting a lot of minutes off the bench for uh, Dick Bennett in this half. Gardner struggling from three-point range. 0 for 4 in the Arizona Wildcats. 0 for 7 from three-point range. Kelly and Boone, two of his guards in foul trouble with two apiece. 